and welcome back to the Canadian Museum of Civilization. We're here because of a gathering between the highest levels of the Canadian government and First Nations leaders. It was announced weeks ago as the nation's attention was focused on a troubled place, Attawapiskat in northern Ontario. You might remember the housing crisis there and the stories our Adrian Arsenault brought us nearly two months ago. Well, Adrian is back in Attawapiskat tonight to check on progress and what's in the way. Attawapiskat's clock ticks. Within two weeks, 22 modular homes will barrel down the ice road to the rescue. The race to ready the road is on. One flat tire on one grader could cost a whole day. So they work nonstop. Minus 30 temperatures welcomed. Confidence is high. But edge closer to town, right into the hall of power, and feel the optimism drain. Okay, did he say why he didn't want to move in yet? Remember when we ordered materials way back in October? They just came in today. They just came in? Yeah. Regular wrinkles, then a nasty one. A verdict that there are rusted, broken pipes on the frozen, solid lots where the modular homes are supposed to go. This needs fixing. Well, you can't do it. Oh, my God. Another delay? Another yeah. delay? Well, you better tell your project manager might have delayed the whole thing. And that means breaking it to Clayton Kennedy, the man who, up until now, has been responsible for the money. It's got to start, like, next week now. We need some money. For the thing to go, we need to have some money to, so we can hire our crews and get them going. Money. A problem. It's why the federal government put Attawapiskat under third-party management when the community bellowed about its housing crisis. Finances are now supposed to be out of the community's hands, but the leadership won't let go. Stalemate. But the third party manager says the money would come if you gave him the information he needed to send the money. Uh, the information he's requesting probably will see the undermining of our total organization. It's a means of a way of taking over. That's why there's no trust. Trust. There's as little of that as there is clarity in Attawapiskat, and it gets personal. The chief and co-manager, who live as a couple in a trailer that was once the jail, travel and work as a unit. Fairly or not, people talk. The perception is that you're a bit of a problem and, and that the relationship with the chief is a bit of a problem and that it, it taints. It doesn't matter what our relation, nobody's business. <laughs> no, but Attawapiskat's future is everyone's business. At the lots where prep work should be underway but isn't yet, a sense the very public housing battle may not have helped the community. Lindy Mutt says he's heard that some Canadians who used to see Attawapiskat as needy now see it as something else. I don't know how to put it. The greedy people. When I go out of town, they ask me where I'm from. And I say, Albany or uh, somewhere else. They don't, I don't want to say Attawapiskat. I'm kind of embarrassed to say Attawapiskat. Embarrassed is a curious word. Explain, we ask. He brings us here. Looks like a nice house. It is. Empty? Empty. How come? Uh, they're not done yet. They've been empty for a while, no? Yes, a year maybe. A year? Or two. Imagine how maddening this would be if you were living in a tent frame and had to look at this empty house. What's worse is we discovered it's not just one house, there are more. Empty, 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 empty. Six in total. How does that happen? And incredibly, this isn't the only First Nation to talk of a housing crisis while half-finished homes just sit. So what happened? Well, in talking with the contractor, the residents, and the band office, it seems the houses were empty because they weren't finished. They weren't finished because the money hadn't come in from the federal government to pay to complete the work. And that happened because the band office went ahead and okayed construction without the proper authorization. So everything just stopped and sat. The good news is, in the last few months, the permissions have come in. Construction has resumed. And so the houses will soon be open. Six homes. This just chips away at a waiting list of hundreds of people. The chief seems to have no regrets about starting construction without authorization. Said they had to take the gamble, anything to at least inch forward. An empty house for two years, you've got people living in tent frames, there's some anger in the land. Yeah. There is, but uh, you know, it's, it's our, our hands are tight because of the government. She says they can't rely on the government anymore and are charting their own path. 
Meanwhile, there's a real chance bills won't get paid unless there's cooperation with the third party manager. Still, she won't budge. I'm not being stubborn. I'm just saying that third party is not a role for this crisis. Crisis, emergency, calls Canadians answered. Needed donations have been delivered already. No one's going to bed cold here anymore. But have a look at this. The parish hall is still full. An excess of generosity. These contributions haven't gone anywhere in weeks. Clothes, smoke detectors, heaters. If Adam Wapiscat doesn't need them now, other communities might. Even Lindy Mudd seems surprised. But I don't think people know about these... Uh... Smoke detectors. Yeah. More smoke detectors. Does the chief... More donations. What's the plan for all this, we asked, as she prepared to head to Ottawa. We're working on it, she said. It's on a long list. Yet in the sun, we don't have much manpower, and we ask for volunteers, but it's hard to get volunteers in the community. So much seems systemically wrong. Lindy Mudd says he can't see a way out, so he's decided to leave. You're going to take your, your eight kids and your wife and go? Mm hmm That's my plan lasts a year and a half, because there's nothing here for my kids. And my daughter just hangs out in the corner or walks around on the road. For me, I don't want my kids to fall through the cracks. I'm gonna take my kids out of this, this place. Maybe come back when everything's said and done. The thing about this family is they claim they're just fine. They aren't considered among the neediest. They simply look at Attawapiskat with no real economy and see an unsustainable life. Do you think this community can survive? Um, <laughs> hardly. What sort of future is there for people your age in this community? Health services, I don't know. Or Northern Star. But I was looking forward to become a doctor or a chef or a school teacher. Think you can do that now if you move? Yeah. So a family of bright young people planning on walking away. Faith in leadership at all levels gone. The young and old frustrated. You don't worry that some of the elders are saying they're fed up? Fed up about what? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but they're saying they're fed up with the leadership here. Well, they're only fed up with leadership because sometimes her hands are tied with the government level and we do our best to do our uh, resources and the funding that we have. And in, even in the previous years, the, the leadership struggle. Explanations for a lot, answers for nothing. She digs in, the federal government digs in, and Attawapiskat exists on the frozen margins. So a lot of frustration there, many complications with making things right, Adrian. Is there any reason to be hopeful that the new modular houses will actually change anything? Well, make no mistake, after all the yelling that's happened, the federal government needs and wants the arrival of 22 houses to look right and be right. And yes, there have been some serious holdups, but there's also going to be a full-on effort to make sure the houses are in place as quickly as possible and are in place as well as possible, given that this certainly is the dead of winter. Peter? Thanks, Adrian. Adrian Arsenault in Attawapiskat tonight.